Yura? Keiichiro's voice carries a twinge of suspicion with it. He's staring directly at Kazuna's back. Then... Kazuna, get away from there! Don't move. It's all over in a split second. Ugh. Toji clicks her tongue in disgust. Yura has a fruit knife pressed against Kazuna's neck. It gleams dully. Good. Good. I'm glad you all understand. No moving. Even a cheap little blade like this is more than sufficient to kill somebody. S sis It looks like Kazuna still hasn't grasped what's going on. Grating laughter escapes from Yura's mouth after she sees how her sister's reacting. I'm sorry, Kasuna. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass. I don't need that kind of happiness. The mere thought of living with you makes me sick. <sighs> Yura keeps whispering word after word into a confused Kasuna's ear. You'll do anything for me. That's what you said, right? Sorry, but what I want is something that you won't be able to arrange. Or rather, you'd just be getting in the way. Sis... Yura slowly looks up. There's only one thing I want. She looks straight at me. What do you want me to do? Her gray eyes stare straight into mine. Shugo-sama... Ever since you started coming to this mansion one week ago, and I started living out every day as Kazuna, that was my happiness. Yura. Yura doesn't respond to me. Instead, she continues her lilting speech with her eyes narrowed in rapture, still holding Kazuna hostage. You came here every day to see Kazuna. You spoke to Kazuna, he held her hand tenderly, hugged Kazuna, delivered gentle kisses to her lips. I was so happy that I thought I would go crazy, really. Nana-san was right, you know. I do possess a certain power. She's referring to... The ability Arashima-san discovered. The power to read people's minds just by touching them. And that's how I knew. Even though you harbored some misgivings in your heart, you still loved me as Kasuna. <gasps> Kasuna's eyes widen in surprise. She turns to regard me with a questioning look. However, I couldn't find it in me to respond. Hell, Yura might be telling it true. Maybe I was crushing my own feelings. I continue to ignore all the warning sirens in my head. All I did was think about loving her without even trying to consider anything else. I was afraid to know the real answer. But this girl ended up surviving and appeared in front of you again. The hatred burns in her eyes as Yura glares at her sister. If I go to the police, you're going to start loving this girl as the real Kasana. Yura smiles. I'm never going to let that happen. Sis! Kazuna's eyes cloud over with tears once more. Okay, if that's the case, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's obvious! If this girl dies, I'll be the only one whom you could love as Kasuna. If that's the case... Yura's right hand twitches and a trickle of blood wells up from Kasuna's neck. In that instant, I... STOP IT! My body acts on instinct, performing a series of actions that was drilled into me during my detective days. I pull out the handgun from my pocket, aim it above Yura's head, and fire off a warning shot. <laughs> Shocked, Yura freezes. It's the gun I got from Toji when we infiltrated Senri. I failed to return it to her, since I hadn't seen her up until this point. Stop it, Yura. 
I keep the gun pointed at Yura while I talk to her. Your Kosuke Yura, that won't change even if you kill Kasuna. I entreat directly to those gray eyes. I can't love you as Kasuna. Yura averts her eyes from me and remains silent. But then... Um, may I say something? Her cheerful voice seems totally out of place. Uh, Shugo-san, please, shoot me. What? Speechless, all I can do is stare into Kazuna's face. She wears a calm, quiet smile, even though there's a knife pressed against her throat. No need to hold back. Bang. Right here, or, or here, perhaps. Completely composed, she points towards the left side of her chest. What are you talking about? There's no way I could do something crazy like that. Hmm, yeah, I guess you're right. It is rather foolish, huh? But, you know, I'm an idiot, so that's all I can think of to help my sister. Kazuna turns around to look at Yura, an embarrassed grin on her face. Because she's... Crying so hard, you know? Kazuna traces her fingers gently along Yura's cheek. I've lived long enough. Kazuna continues in an indifferent tone. My family in Kanda is really poor, but Mom's always been kind to me. Before I knew it, I'd achieved my childhood dream of standing up on a big stage. I enjoy it each and every day. I feel like it's more than I deserved. Kazuna closes her eyes and gently hugs the arms encircling her neck. If my death can grant your wish, sis, then I'm okay with that. She flashes us a wan smile. What are you talking about? That's pointless. Oh, Shugo-san? I'm sorry for suddenly asking you to do something so strange. That means I'll make you a murderer, huh? <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Kazuna smiles, slightly embarrassed again. You really are an idiot. Why are you apologizing over something like that? Yeah, you're right. Kazuna puffs her chest out proudly. I thought it'd be nice to be killed by you, Shugo-san, since I'm an idiot and all. If you do it, you'll never forget me, right? Please, Shugo-san, will you fulfill this final selfish request of mine? She slowly opens her mouth and says, Please make my sister happy. Don't be ridiculous. As she grinds her teeth together, Yura grits out in a harsh whisper. You think that will make me happy? Sis? How far must you go? A hoarse growl escapes from between Yura's lips. You're tired of tormenting me. And in the very next instant... Oh shit! Shugo, stop her! Kazuna! Everybody starts shouting at the same time. As Yura raises her arm to strike, Toji and Nana leap toward her to stop her, while Keiichiro just stands there with his mouth hanging open. I see the blade gleaming as it's about to be plunged into Kazuna's neck. I see Kazuna looking fearlessly into her sister's face. And then... I see Yura sobbing like an abandoned child. And that's why I... Pull the trigger. My train's headed toward Ueno Station. 
The conductor's voice echoes down the corridors, and it looks like we're due to arrive any moment now. I lift my head from the back of my seat, stifling a yawn. It's just another weekday afternoon. There aren't many people riding the train at this hour, as I don't even hear the quiet voices of people conversing. After spending ten long days locked up, the fatigue has found a way to build up inside me. I pretty much fell asleep as soon as I sat down. As I rub my eyes, I can see the scenery whipping by through the window. Spring has nearly come, most of the snow covering the city has melted away. I'm finally back. This is no time to be reminiscing, the spring scenery speeding past the window gradually slows to a crawl. Here I am, Ueno Station. I encounter a familiar face as soon as I exit the station. She stands alone in the center of the crowded plaza. Hey! I raise my hand in greeting. Uh, welcome back, Shugo-san. Kozuki Kasuna smiles as she greets me. Kasuna had used the time in between rehearsals to come out here and welcome me back. Do you still have free time? It's been a while. Wanna go for a walk? Sure. I'll keep you company. Thus, we walk off together. Oh, and by the way, Kazuna. Yes? How's everybody been doing as of late? Oh, um... Toji-san's been busy as ever. Whenever I see her, she always rushes off immediately, saying she has some business to attend to. <laughs> well, that's just how things are for her. She only came to visit me a single time, too. Oh, Nana-san's been hanging around Toji-san quite a lot recently as well. A lot of interesting stuff happens when I'm with her, she said. <sighs> I wish that sister of mine would stop meddling around and getting herself into trouble. I sigh and look at Kazuna. How's the madam and her crew doing? Everything going all right for them? Oh, yeah. I went to visit them a little while ago. Nothing's changed. She said you could give her a holler whenever you were in a pinch, and they'd help you out. <laughs> Man, that sounds just like Madam Ujaku. She's always there for her friends. Oh, and... Kasuna looks down at the ground. Sis still hasn't opened her eyes yet. Ah. Uh, at that moment, my bullet struck Yura in the right side of her chest. Both Yura and Kasuna had frozen in place. Yura, however, eventually toppled to the ground. A fountain of fresh blood spurted out as she howled in pain. By the time I ran up to her, Yura's face was already pale, and she lost consciousness shortly thereafter. Yura, already weak to begin with, was transported to the hospital. She hasn't regained consciousness ever since. I see, so she hasn't... Something weird happened, Shugo-san. Ever since that day, Father's been acting all timidly. He took time off from work, and he's been spending all his time with my sister at the hospital. Wow, seriously? Yeah. He also became more accepting of my acting career. You're free to do as you please, he told me. <laughs> the complete turnaround. Oh, come to think of it, I heard from Toji that you were headed to a theater group overseas, right? Apparently, a director who saw one of her recent productions was enthralled by her talent. He invited her to refine her skills with an American theatrical group. That's a perfect opportunity for you, right? Since your dad's not opposed to it anymore, you can go and study acting without any reservations. Yeah. Kazuna hesitates for a few moments, then looks back up after seemingly working up her resolve. But you know, I... Even though I've been waiting for this for so long, I'm thinking about turning down their offer. 
Huh? I blurt out in an idiotic sounding voice before I can stop myself. Kasuna once told me that her dream was to go abroad and learn the art of theater straight from the source. Then why on earth would she turn them down? Um, I gave it a lot of thought and... I'd like to be by my sister as much as possible. Besides, I'm satisfied. Kazuna smiles. I've been allowed to do what I want, so... Her words bear a strong resemblance to the things she had said to an angry Yura on that fateful day. That's why I'm not sure what to do. I felt that way ever since that day. I was unable to protect the people important to me, and to save Kazuna, I had to point my gun at Yura. And now they're both hurt and suffering. If only I had realized how they had felt sooner, I'm sure things would have ended differently. I should be the one to bear the blame for all this. I'm the one who should have disappeared from their lives. My very existence alone brings sorrow on them. I've always harbored those kinds of thoughts inside. However... Don't do it, Kazuna. Is what I end up saying. That's not what Yura would have wanted. Uh? Do you remember what she said that day? You think that'll make me happy? Yura was always struggling in the darkness on her own, without anyone to help her. She probably needed someone to hate in order to sustain herself and find the strength to keep living. That person ended up being someone who was born in the same environment, but through a slight twist of fate received happiness instead. And that person was you, Kasuna. I... I can't. And that's why, though she hated you, she also admired you. She wanted to be you so badly she was willing to cast everything else aside. And that's why... I continue. You can't stop now. So that you'll still be the object of her hatred on the day she wakes up. And so that she'll still admire you. But if that's the case, then... If I travel overseas... Then Sis will be all alone again. Don't worry, you can leave her to me. I choose words that will convey my resolve toward Kasuna, who faces me with her brow furled anxiously. Uh? I'll stay by her side until she wakes up, until you come back. I don't know if a guy like me is really qualified to say something like that. Go without a heavy heart, go and make your dreams come true. I don't think this counts as atonement, but I've already decided I'm never going to run away again. No matter what kind of grief awaits me in the future, I will continue to protect what's important to me. Shuko-san. Kazuna looks down and whispers, Do you think my sister will forgive me if I do this? Who knows? I shrug casually. Kazuna looks up at me, surprised. Unlike Yura, I don't possess any sort of special powers. I have no idea what people think, deep down inside. There's no way I know whether Yura will forgive you or not. But... But you've got all the time in the world now. We'll wait as long as it takes. Until Yura's wounds heal, all we can do is have faith and wait. Wait, huh? After murmuring that softly, she looks back down at the ground. It looks like Kazuna's pondering something. End. At some point, our journey has taken us to the foot of Senri's gate. We stare at the steps leading up to Senri's temple. That despicable cult full of criminals. Sinri crumbled shortly after its scandals were exposed for all of society to see. There's no longer anyone up there at the end of this stairway. All that's left is the burned out ruin of a temple, a dark reminder of the tragedy that took place there. 
To me, it's proof that the murders have finally come to an end. Those are the thoughts that flit through my brain as I stand there staring up at the gate, whose surroundings are already cloaked in the verdant greenery of spring. Shugo-san? It happens out of the blue. Kasuna? Kasuna leaps into my arms and hugs me forcefully. I'm gonna go. And she whispers into my ear hoarsely. I'll study my hardest and chase my dreams so my sister will always have someone to look up to. Sure. I'll leave sis to you. Shugo-san, you take good care of her until the day I come back. Okay, I got it. She then pulls away from me and says, Well, Shugo-san, I'll be going soon. Please don't cheat on me, since you're going to be all alone with Sis. <laughs> you dummy, there's no way I'd... <laughs> I was kidding! Kasuna. Seeing her confident, smiling face fills me with joy. I know she has some dark shadows left to wrestle with, but those shining eyes of hers definitely haven't changed. You're right. Now it's my turn. Until Yura wakes up, and until Kazuna achieves her dreams and returns. Hell, I don't know how much time that'll take. I don't know if there's a guarantee that happiness awaits us at the end of this long road. However... Just like how Yura waited endlessly in the darkness, all we can do is keep on believing. During these boundless, uneventful days... And one day? We can all live happily ever after, right? You bet. The sound of time ticking away The soft gentle palm of your hand It blooms upon me A desire I thought forgotten And through my hazy awareness The color of red overflowing All this desire
Let's start project.